Uh, but we've got um, a sense for a direct experience that he has had today uh, on the campaign trail. Uh, the problems, the challenges, and the solutions are there before us. We've been talking about all of those since 10 o'clock this morning. And we've had the experts, the members of the um, uh, policy review uh, and future view team speak. And the time has come now for people to ask us questions. Um, so the phone lines are open in asking us questions while the questions are getting ready to come. We have a number of issues we haven't dealt deeply enough with. One of them is education, which is frontier. Education and healthcare determine the progress that we can make. So we speak some to education. Um, I've got a, another Lagos Business School uh, professor, Efan uh, who with me here. Um, we are going to speak to some of the programs that we have to engage the Nigerian people. Uh, one of them is how we clean up Nigeria. And when we say clean up, both physically and figuratively. In physical, we begin this clean up. We've started this clean up Nigeria initiatives. But next week, Saturday, is the big bang across the country. Uh, the um, support groups, youth groups across Nigeria are going to go out there to clean up Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Chidi Akbaluba, <coughs> who manages that out of the big tent, will speak to it. But in the meanwhile, call us on any of the issues that we, had, we have dealt with. But uh, fine, let's start with you making some comments about the challenge of education. Uh, 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 in my opening remarks, I talked about Angus Deaton and the work on the Great Escape. Thank you, Professor Tome. Mm. Um, there's no doubt about it, you know, that today, Nigerian education is in crisis. And uh, this crisis, you know, is enormous. Okay. Uh, because the crisis is enormous, um, because the crisis is enormous, I think it is about time now to, to have a change in the Nigerian political systems. There's no country, you know, on earth that can not be able to develop without education. So education is the key to development. And we look at education right now, um, it's in a big problem. So I'm delighted that um, the new president, um, Peter B, uh, will come in here and then revolutionize education. The education system comes in a three-section segment, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary one. When you look at, for example, what he has in his portfolio in um, education, basically is that the education system will be reformed, totally reformed, in such a way that we can take back that educational system that has been lost. Uh, starting, for example, with the primary one, you know, is in policy that um, in this particular age segment, in the area, all, the, all, the, all the areas that they're going to be a system whereby, you know, all the stakeholders will be involved. What do I mean by stakeholders involved? Both teachers and also uh, parents that are being educated in such a way that in primary one, his policy is that we're going to come in and uh, come out with a parental, you know, administration. Whereby, for example, they're going to be a PA, PTA, you know, different areas. Uh, they're going to come out with about five board members, five to nine, more, no more than five, five to nine board members, whereby they can be able to meet together. And then in the, in the area of um, free primary education, he planned basically to make sure that the primary education still exists in the you know, primary and secondary school level. And then at the same time also, he's going to be able to come out with a big innovation idea, whereby for okay. example. Um, OK, sorry. While, while we can hold your thought, let's take a caller, uh, and, and we can return to your thoughts. Yes. Hello, yes, please, very quick. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's been a very interesting program. I've watched you all through the day, and I'm so pleased with the level of commitment you guys have given. With respect to education, we know the situation of educational pressure in this country. We are also particularly have been on strike prior before, now before they came back for over eight months. Now they are back, but the issue is not clearly settled. 
we know that they're going to go back to strike because the stress is still there. When Jonathan was there, out of the 1.3 trillion, he paid 200 million, 200 billion, and the issue will not be settled. What will this government do if eventually they are elected into office and uh, Peter will be ready to become the president? What are the modalities that people will use to stop us to strike once and for all? Because our secondary schools in Nigeria are now glorified primary schools. The infrastructures are not there. We are talking about a situation where a lot of children in this school are now Yahoo Yahoo children. It's right from that tender age they have been incorporated to this Yahoo. And it's now become a national crisis. And the issues are there with a multi-dimensional poverty level of 133 million persons, poverty in education, poverty in housing, poverty uh, in health. Thank you so very what much. Do you people do I know that you're a think tank. Uh, you have vast experience in financial management. What are you people going to do to ensure that our primary schools, when I was young, I went to nursery school, so that our primary schools, our nursery schools, our investors can be compared to world-class standards. Harvard is not in utopia. Harvard is not in the sky. Harvard is somewhere around the world. Why can't we build institutions in this country that will be able to educate the citizens? Okay, thanks so very much. We appreciate uh, the passion uh, with which you are asking the question. Let's start with the simple fact that Mr. Peter Obi makes. When he became governor of Anambra State, Anambra was 26 in the Federation. He made a number of policy decisions, which included essentially getting the traditional providers of education to take back the system against much opposition. In two, three years, in WAEC, um, what's the other one, NECO results, uh, Anambra went from 26 to second and then first. It shows that the stakeholder engagement process, which Professor Zegu was talking about a moment ago, primary school are where we shape our children. If the parents are involved in policy, if the local administration is engaged, it's a very personal thing, and they will ensure that their children will get the very best. And so that is a starting point uh, from that point going forward. Again, Mr. B likes to make the point that uh, when he was governor of Anambra, they got to a position where ASU, even till today, even long after he left, ASU at Anambra State University did not join the current strike because they created a certain level of engagement that literally took them out of the uh, pressure points that our university system uh, ex experiences currently. So at the heart of this is stakeholder commitment, the resourcing of the educational system to enable us get the best. And then, of course, because values shape human progress, who are the providers of the socialization of the children? How do they get molded, character formed? This is very important for education, you know. Maybe yes. I can come in here before. Yes. Because uh, I was part of the um, policy com um, manifesto committee on education. One of the key things, our, currently our educational system is dysfunctional. The key function of education is to draw out the greatness in people. But when people go through the dysfunctional education we have in Nigeria today, that greatness is not brought out. So one of the things we agree the pure government will do is to create a functional, practical, and relevant educational system in the primary secondary school segment that is going to be free and compulsory. Now, the education is not just going to be for the child to just go and learn academics. It's going to be a total man education that will involve the physical, the mental, and the emotional development of the child. We're going to expose a child, every Nigerian child, from primary one to vocational tr ski training, vocational ski training, um, and sports development, uh, all that will uh, be okay, passed. We have another caller. Yes, please, very quickly, 30 seconds. Yes, uh, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Uh, we are fine over here. 
I want to appreciate you guys for the hard work you are doing. You know, everybody will say that we in the dance period, we cannot vote, but we have family down back at home. So that is our concern. So please, I, I want to contribute to the issue, the issue of education and the rest. If, uh, Mr. Peter Albin has analyzed everything, even it was it yesterday, it was with AY, he answered a lot of questions. I know people will keep continue asking this question about how things will be done, how things will be done. But I want everybody to believe that this change has come. Let's accept the change. Thank you so very much. Thanks. We've got the one and only Pastor Itua Igodalo with us. And he has fixed many things in the past. Uh, how are we going to fix education? You know, what has been lacking in Nigeria is sincerity. Sincerity, sincerity, sincerity. Nigeria has more than enough resource to take care of a lot of these things. Mm. And even if there's no resource, there's help, uh, you know, from anywhere to fix education. Uh, education was at a certain level at a certain time in Nigeria, especially in Western Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And people were getting educated, people were getting scholarships, people were going abroad. We all knew the standard of education we had in Nigeria barely 40 years ago, where if you went to school abroad, it was simply because you probably couldn't make it in Nigeria. Um, so what we need to do is to start from a point of view of really looking critically at the system. We all know what the problems are. Well, number one is underfunding. Number two is government getting involved in what it shouldn't get involved in. I don't know why government has, is in charge of the federal government colleges. I don't know why it cannot spin off these colleges to the uh, old boy network or to some NGO or to somebody. Well, I mean, in, in some ways, you and I are both Ibado boys. Yes. We, we, we went to school in Ibado. The old school I went to had a, an old boy that became governor. And we battled him until he left. He couldn't deal with what people be dealt with in Anambra, by the way. He didn't return to school. But eventually, changes are taking place. The old boys have gotten together, gone to the governor. Still, why is it so difficult? Your mother was the first woman to become a permanent secretary, uh, as you were back in those days. The kinds of policies that, why is it so difficult to make those kinds of things happen today? Part of it is corruption. Hmm. Part of it is a wrong tone at the top. Hmm. Part of it is insincerity, as I said before. And part of it is the political will. There's no big deal about returning, even returning schools back to the uh, original owners. And mm. that's what it should be, mm -hmm. you know, because they started the schools be in the first place. They had the vision for the schools. They knew what they were trying to do and so on and so forth. But you see, if you go to most of the ministries and all that, one director somewhere, one permanent secretary somewhere, one somebody somewhere is sitting on a lot of money, uh, budget and all that. And that really simply is sometimes what mitigates against this thing. Mm. But if you have a governor who is strong, who is sincere, who is determined, and he issues that within the next six months, this school should go back to where they're coming from and whoever owns them and all that, it will happen. It will happen, but we all play politics. We play too much politics with our lives, with our future, with our education, with our health, and so on and so forth. The graft is unbelievable. And until we can really take out this graft, it will be a problem. Okay, we've got another caller. Please, very quickly, maybe you should say your name, and then in 30 seconds, please ask the question. Um, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Timothy. I'm calling from uh, the UK. Okay. Um, yes, um, I just want to come in to for what you're saying. I've been following it up since morning, and I want to say uh, good luck to you guys. I uh, don't want to take uh, much of your time, but I just want to make a couple of contributions and um, a long contribution on the actual question. Um, see, um, I was listening to um his excellency in Eva Shivan um the lady asked him the question regarding those that are still now money and those that are still in the past. So I just want to ask, you know, because that is an area we can help to pay our debts. So if we are saying that we're going to leave those that are still in our money, so then there is that anybody that 
Well, thank you. Um, I, I think that the way that the administration that is to come is gearing itself up is it will be an engaged one. Uh, it will get people of competence, of character, with compassion to man the appropriate organs of government so that the kinds of challenges we have today will be reduced. But I think what is more important is using culture, is using technology to prevent rather than waiting to cure. You know, we're often looking at catching the thief and we can prevent the, th the person from stealing in the first place. Today, we can easily use technology that is available, which enables us to all see at the same time the transactions that are taking place, such that you know, the opportunity of discretion, of hiding around the corner, which is then used to get corrupted, is far less there. And that's why we, we see that institutions are important. The average person in the UK is no more honest than the average person in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But they know that there is consequence. And when they, because they know the consequence exists, it will catch up with them. Today, even traffic, you know that even if there's no policeman around, the camera will pick you up and you will get the ticket and you will have to pay. Uh, you then begin to avoid those. After a while, it becomes a habit not to run the light. And in, in the institutional economics school, uh, it's sometimes described as the settled habit of a community. But the same people in the UK who are now with that settled habit behaving appropriately before traffic lights, leave them in Nigeria after one week, they'll be breaking traffic lights. <laughs> so I think that this is, um, this turning to technology and all of that and preventing that is better. Any thoughts or reactions to his question? Zander Kola, okay, please come through very quickly. Perhaps mention your name and okay. question. Uh, good evening. Good evening. My name is Ahmad Kalo and I'm calling from Uwere. Okay. Please, sir, uh, my question is this. Um, in 2012, when APC were, were doing their campaign, some of them were lawyers, very, very lawyers. But when, it, when they get to office, when Nigeria select them to office, they, be, they now become more powerful than Nigerians. So what are the assurance the obedient family is giving to Nigerians that they will be obedient to the electorate? They will be no, they will be no, they will be, that they will not be powerful more than the Nigerians that elect them. So what is the assurance that you giving the electorate? Thank you and good evening. Well, thank you very much. Perhaps I can start with any of you responding to that before I come. It's what leadership really is all about, accountability. Uh, we have to have systems in place. In fact, one of the things that the, uh, the group, the think tank, is considering is that there will be clearly stated uh, contracts from the people or with the people from the government. And three years into the administration, if those things have not been met, if the government has not been transparent, a recall of the government should start. Yes. The, go the ob big government is inviting you to recall it. If after three years you see that it has not lived its promise. I, I, I think this government is committed, or the OB movement is committed to making sure that things are not done as they've been done in the past. 
making sure that there's transparency, making sure that there's accountability, making sure that promises are delivered. If not, we have recourse to the polls in four years' time. And that's the benefit of democracy. And that's the important thing, that the Nigerian people should rise up and start asking questions. Nigerians should stop being afraid and stop being cowed by government or the presence of government. And this is what is important at this point in time. OK. Uh, we have another caller. Let's take that one quickly. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Your name, please. And the uh, question within oh. 30 seconds, if you could. OK, sir. My, my name is El, El Omega. I am calling from the United States. So my question is, we all know the importance of internet to be available for everyone. I know if I'm wrong, I think Sweden takes internet service as part of the human right. What is the plan of the coming government to make internet service available in Nigeria? Okay, please. Yes. The government is um, making great effort to ensure that there is an internet um, fiber optics in every uh, state capital and every federal government and, and university or tertiary institution across the country mm -hmm. to make internet available to every young Nigerian. This is technology, and it's not rocket science anymore. Um, once the tone at the top is right, the funding can be provided and found. And in these days and age, it's a sine qua non that every local area, every institution, every government institution must have first-class internet service. It's almost like having air and oxygen and water. You know, anybody who doesn't consider these things right now is not serious and is not ready to do business. And if the government does not do that, then the government must be held to question. The technology is available in different forms, and the technology needs to be deployed. And it's also a technology that will pay for itself, pay for itself over time with the usage and things like that. So it's a self-financing thing. It's not rocket science, it's no big deal. You know what I, I keep repeating, like a broken record, what has been lacking in Nigeria? for the past almost 60 years is sincerity and a determination to serve the Nigerian people and to do the best for the Nigerian people. The uh, Prime Minister of Dubai, Sheikh Al Maktoum, yeah. says the job of a government is to make its people happy, to make sure that every single citizen is provided for, given opportunity, allowed to express themselves, allowed to grow and develop, not this situation where it's them and the rest, and where people are given this sense of servanthood and lack of belonging uh, in, in a society that's their own, where poverty is weaponized, where illiteracy is weaponized, and so on and so forth. There needs to be a change at this point in time where there's much more relevance and importance and regard given to the people. I think we have another caller. And the person okay, is Yes, we'll take that call quickly. And by the way, I'd like to ask uh, our technical crew to check. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. OB has not taken off. Uh, so if he's uh, on, on the board, you can bring him in to say one more thing or even res respond to any of the questions. Uh, yeah, let's take a question then. Oh, he's back. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we'll continue. Yeah, are you able to? You want to say something? Hello? Hello? After a very stressful day. Hello? 
Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. I was just uh, I just listened to two questions where somebody asked about issue of education. No, I didn't hear the comments very well. I wish I had known. Well, that's part of the challenge of uh, uh, technology with low bandwidth everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. What so, this question was uh, about okay. education. Talked about your Anambra's experience in uh, in response to that question. The question was that. Hello, are you what, hearing me? What is yeah. your government going to do no. about education? Hello. Yeah. Education. The question was, what would your government do to transform education? Are you hearing me now? Yes. Okay. Hear you, yeah. okay. Well, for me, like I was said. Education is the most important investment any country or society can do for its people. And it's been clearly been shown. Stuff. Okay. Well, well, yeah. While well, we're waiting for him to get a better connection, I'd like to just spend a quick uh, uh, minute and ask Chidi to speak to um, the initiative on Clean Up Nigeria in very quick one, yeah. two minutes. Yeah, we all know that the country is Clearly in Anambra State, we are first, we ensure that our education is well funded, well provided and everything and everybody saw the transformation where we had male issue with in terms of admission because the males we are going to school so we had girl uh, male issue in education we we're able to bring it back we are male now and more in our secondary schools than female at least equal before it used to be 80 20, we reverse that. If you go to Anambra State today, public schools are more attractive than even private schools. Yeah, that is um, a, a very important point, actually. Uh, I, I can share an experience. Um, uh, one of your predecessors, uh, of the bigger old Anambra state, uh, uh, Ekomodo, Emeka, Omerua. I recall uh, uh, visiting him in Enugu, uh, and um, I said to him, I was just coming from the University of Nigeria. I had gone to visit the University of Nigeria after having been gone for many years. And I said to him, my goodness, I was shocked going to Nsuka. Can you imagine? There's even a woman sleeping in my room. What used to be my my dorm, the all female female, uh, uh, oh, and nice yes, nice. and uh, he said, oh, that when he came to Anambra, he thought all the schools. Anytime I went to visit to schools, thought the schools were girl schools, and then he got to one. There were two boys in the class, so he asked them, "You two boys, what are you doing in a girl school?" They said, "No, it's not a girl school. It's a mixed school, <laughs> and that um, you know the boys were not coming." And, um, the, 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 you know, he asked the boys, what's happening? He said, the other boy said that before these people finish finishing this school, they would have limited. <laughs> <laughs> they would have limited. <laughs> limited liability company. <laughs> so, in fact, uh, his commission, one of his commissioners, Professor Joffo, wrote a book on male enrollment dropout or something like that in Anambra State. And that was reversed during your, your time in Anambra State. How, how were you able to reverse it? Do you mm. It's very simple. It's by by the time you started and show investing in education, refurbishing the schools, making it more attractive, 
preaching it everywhere on the need for education. Even those who want to be limited, those who want to do anything, those who want to go to market, we're talking to them on the importance of education. That it is critical for whatever you want to do, education first. But it be to be preached in churches and everything, parents gathering, gathering, all various gatherings and everything. And you saw people, they started seeing the values and everything in what we are preaching, what we are saying. And that's what I'm turning around. Parents are they rolling their met children into back into school. And then they said they're going back to school. We started encouraging various uh, when we schools we are giving back to the churches. We encourage them, like the main schools, to ensure that they go out attracting the main students back to school, which they did, and it all worked. That's interesting. So, governments come, governments go, they make promises, they don't keep their promises. What are you going to do different to make sure that the people can... It's a very simple thing. Where we are now, like I told people in Southern Canada today, where we are now, nobody can afford to do fake promise. That's why they have to check people's background, people's record. If somebody is making promise, for example, saying I'm going to fight corruption or anything, Let's go to where he passed through before and check what he was able to do. It's a simple thing. Let's know how much money he was able to, how he managed his resources, what he kept when he was living, how, you know, these are things to look at. People must have track record when they are seeking office. We should be able to investigate the previous office they've held, where they are coming from, and be able to evaluate, would they do better if they are given another office? Character is like smoke. It will always out. So if you can't establish the character question, don't vote. But I, I think a, a preacher put it very nicely. May your children be like those you plan to vote for. <laughs> say amen if you believe it. And, and people didn't say amen. <laughs> so we should all go back and examine our consciences. Do we want to be led by people who don't want our children to be like? This matters. Another caller is here. Uh, so let's take another caller. Yes, yes hello. Yes, hello. Yes. Your name, where you're calling from, please, quickly, and a short My name, question. My name is, is Tony Agbons, calling from uh, London in the UK. Yeah, gentlemen, Pastor Itwa, uh, Prophet Tommy, great to see you guys at Chatham House on Monday. Thank you. I just good. want to quickly say that um, this is my constituency, and uh, I will suggest that in revamping our educational system, we had to really look at technical and vocational education, sports, mm. the apprenticeship system, especially as it goes to do with our brothers in some part of the country, and even nomadic education. Mm. So this, to me, will be the uh, holistic approach. Thank you, guys. Great job you are doing. God bless you all. Thank you so much. I think that's what we have already in, mm. uh, in America. Yeah, it's already here. Comprehensive. You know, comprehensive. Mm. You know, starting from Mental, the primary physical. level, yes. Whereby you know nobody going to graduate without having that particular knowledge. By the time a child is sixteen Six years, years, he's already Algorithm. establishing a, at least one, one skill. One scale. Why he's also acquiring the educational certification? Very nobody comes out from secondary school without being fully equipped with one functional basic skill yeah, he can yeah. live his life with. He doesn't have, everybody doesn't have to go to the university. university. Yeah, very yeah. comprehensive plan. I mean, as I say to people all the time. You know, if your plumbing is uh, it, uh, it, plumbing is needed in your house in Germany, 
the fellow who comes to fix it might show up in his 7 Series BMW <laughs> because he makes <laughs> more, money. <laughs> more money than the PhD sometimes yeah. because that's a skill. Yeah. That, that, uh, even locally here, we can see it. What, yeah. Tiling. Yeah. Uh, my favorite uh, joke, or not joke, actually, truth. So you enter a room where the tiling is straight. You know that some people from Beni, Mali, or somewhere have, have done the work. <laughs> If you see the one that Nigerians have done, <laughs> it will be like River Niger <laughs> because of a skill shortage. But guess what? Go to Lome. The finest houses there are built by those tilers tiling in Nigeria. You know? So skills are so important. And a skills uh, emphasis in education is a, an imperative of a new education trust. We're going to launch what is called Every Youth a Skill. So no Nigerian youth will be idle anymore. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a skill, we equip you with a skill mm -hmm. so that you can earn a living by yourself. Please, yes. Okay, we got another caller. Yes, please tell us who you are, where you're calling from, very quickly. Yes, my name is Mr. Otita. I am calling from Johannesburg, South Africa. Johannesburg, welcome. I. I, I salute you all. Uh, you guys are doing a great job for the country. Uh, as I know this is a Nigeria project and, and not uh, only uh, uh, his excellency Peter Obi and that is the entire team project. This is a Nigerian project. That is what I find this movement to be. Um, our concern here in the diaspora is the process of the uh, EVC collection. Uh, what we are seeing in the media is not uh, too encouraging, and uh, we are worried that uh, this might uh, affect the process of uh, Labour Party uh, during the election. So please, uh, it's just an advice that. Uh, we should have um, uh, a team that uh, also um, monitor the, the issuance of the PVC because um, I think that is the only place that uh, we are very scared of and worried of uh, that might affect the result of the election. Thank you. We share your concerns. We're working very hard at it. All kinds of initiatives are coming up to respond to that. Uh, we have uh, some someone coming on Zoom. Uh, and Lakola. Uh, all right. Okay. So, anyway, uh, Chidi was going to talk about uh, the Clean Up Nigeria initiative, which is essentially based around the fact that our environment is a big mess, and environment matters in today's world. We want to orient our young people through their own action, showing example of how to take care of the environment. But it's not just that we clean up the environment, we clean up the consciousness of the country. Because part of the garbage is the corruption in the heads of people. Part of the garbage is the nepotism in the heads of people. And as young people go around picking up garbage, they're talking to people about how we can have a better country. Chidi, just quickly. Okay. A little bit about Okay, we need to take a call. After uh, the call. Another call. Okay. Yes, please. Introduce yourself, where you're calling from, and 30 seconds. My name is, Doc. My name is Dr. Sigbeme from Lokoja. Welcome. My question, or rather maybe suggestion, is that I don't know whether, well, let me first of all commend the effort of the team. You guys have done SLSD so well. We are watching and we are impressed and we are happy that a new government is coming. The students, that a, a chunk of number of the students that register, if you look at all over the federation, especially the federal government university, I don't know whether you have reached out NUCB, the regulator of the university system, to have a way of giving... Uh, need semester break to students at least a week before the presidential election such that chunk of the student can participate in the election and have the convenience to travel to their places. I think we can reach out to NUC, maybe through CUPP or APAC 
or maybe in the peace, national peace committee to, to do this. Thank yeah. you. Justice, justice suggests that we do something like that. Uh, in spite of the fact that we have a lot of voter suppression efforts in places by people who shout that they have structure, but are so afraid that they are suppressing voting, trying to prevent people from collecting their vote, uh, voter registration card. I mean, this is the terrible part of incivility in public life that we see in Nigeria today. Lagos is a very good example of a place where that is happening and around the country. People must stop doing that. But we say, the incivility uh, aside, we need decisions like uh, giving the, the, the um, young people who are back in school a chance to go back and vote. Maybe a midterm break or something. Well, that should be optional because you have to remember that some of them registered in school. Okay. So the school so must not be completely shut no, down. No, no, yeah. no, so, 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 so shut down in eight, for eight months. <laughs> Most of the new people okay. are registered. They are registered. Yeah, yeah, we, are, we are home when they we register. When they register. And they just went back to school. Okay. But I, I learned that most of the schools will be closing by the middle of February okay. for the holidays for them to go back okay. and, and do the election. Okay. Schools are not usually in section in Nigeria during elections. Yeah. I don't know this, if this is going to be uh, different. Yeah. Okay. okay. Question coming on Zoom. Please, let's take that Zoom question or those Zoom questions. Hello? Hello? Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. Can I go on? Go on, please. Go yeah. Good evening, all. For first of all, I and your team, I must commend you for the great job you are doing. Uh, my question really is uh, the opinion of the uh, Labour Party and uh, the principal people be with regards to the withheld eight more salaries of ASU members. That is my opinion, my question, Pepe. Thank yeah. you. The issue will be confronted and dealt with at the appropriate time. Whatever people are owed, they will be paid. That's as simple as that. <laughs> I mean, justice <laughs> is important. I mean, no. if the students graduated, People prepared them for graduation, and all those issues will be considered. Okay, let's take the Zoom question. Okay, all right. The other caller on the phone. Yeah, hello, my, my Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, my name is Jonathan from Canada. My my question. Is, uh, concerning, um, Where are you calling from, Jonathan? Not just the police. Canada. Canada, okay. I'm calling from Calgary, Canada. Okay. Yeah. My question is uh, concerning uh, police brutality, and I want to extend it to the men in uniform, the military, the Air Force, the Navy, the Soviet. So, what is the plan that LP would have? Stop, not just to minimize, to stop where we have situations uh, a soldier beating up a policeman because they are supposed to set the example for um, you know, yeah. a lawful society. But we are seeing it great yeah. on mm -hmm. social media where military men will be harassing a fellow military. Uh, and not to talk of uh, what they do to civilians, but we, we want a situation where everything is stopped and and that nobody goes caught free if you exercise such disgrace on the street to disgrace the nation. Well, thank you. Thank I, you. I appreciate that. This is a subject I've heard Mr. B respond to several times at rallies. And, and usually I like to watch the faces of the policemen around when he responds to that. And compassion, yes. training, all of those things will... Paying them decently will lead to a reorientation. And once you get them in the right place, consequence management. <coughs> you do what is inappropriate, the consequence comes to you when the environment is properly set. 
Look, Hong Kong used to have one of the most corrupt police forces in the world. Today, exact opposite. <laughs> you can achieve that in Nigeria. Uh, unfortunately, there is a certain situation with the collapse of culture in our country that authority is seen as the right to bully. Anybody who has authority in Nigeria or wears a uniform usually assumes that as a license to bully. And we must change that. The statement, the police is your friend, has to become real. Uh, sometimes it's not quite so today. But we know that we have men in the police force who can be trained to appreciate and behave differently. Maybe I should add this. You know, when, when you change the working environment of the police, a lot of things will change. You know about the broken window theory. Mm -hmm. When you go to the police stations in Nigeria and mm -hmm. see how terribly bad that place is, people that come out from that environment cannot actually be so civil. Mm -hmm. We need, we are going to improve their working conditions mm -hmm. and working environment and their living conditions and living environment and they are taking pay. pay. Okay. When all these things are put in place, they will become happy. Yeah. And then they will begin to protect the citizens. But when they are not properly taken care of, they, 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 they <laughs> prove their anger yes. on the citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, as a caller, I'm the caller. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Now, let's talk about the, the clean up Nigeria. We know today... Should I go? Go ahead. Yeah, we know today that Nigeria is in a total mess. It's actually sitting oh. on the precipice. Okay, let's take this caller. Hello? Yeah? Hello? Please go ahead. Yes, um, the issue here is that uh, those, those that they don't, they don't have their PGC, and they have been looking for PGC, how they are they going to get their PGC? Those that don't have their PGC, um, there are still a, a few days of Did grace. Yes, yes. I think we may need to put pressure on nine. I don't see the reason why the PVC collection should end by 29th. Yes, I why can't it be extended to second week of February? Well, you know, the original law actually allows you to be able to even Pick uh, up PVC. Uh, uh, register on a month to the election and then get your PVC. But as I often say, we tend to favor bureaucracy okay. over democracy. Uh, however, let all of us make the effort we, as if our lives depend on it because, in truth, our lives depend on this. Yeah, correct. This is a watershed in our country's history. If we don't get rid of the old order, Africa will mock us because the rest of Africa has managed to begin to get rid of these kinds of uh, deities of corruption that we call political parties in their countries. Look at the last couple of elections. The outside candidates defeated the establishment candidates. Whether it's Kenya, Lesotho, yes, yes. Botswana, yeah. Malawi, all of these places. It's Nigeria's turn to get rid of the uh, old bad rubbish and have a new order. Okay, Kola. Yes, quickly. Uh, am I on? Yes. Okay. Uh, now what that um, we are discussing clean up Nigeria. I know many voters would be interested in knowing whether the cleanup of the voters' register is something we we'll actually have confidence in, because that is what will encourage the voters to come out to vote, that there is integrity in the INEC register and the process. How are we sure that um, there are no uh, compromises in this uh, INEC voters register? as I've speculated in the news. Thank you. The subject, and as citizens, I think it's the duty of all of us, including you, to put pressure on the system to ensure that the right thing is done. Okay, actually. Yeah, so we're talking about cleaning the entire system in Nigeria, cleaning our mental system, cleaning our value system, Cleaning Nigeria from corruption, from work without from work without enterprise, and then bringing Nigerians to the consciousness that look, there's need for a, a complete change. We need to sweep out the old order, the political bandits that have held Nigeria hostage, and then bring in a new order of leadership that is totally responsible to the people. So we are going to do a symbolic cleaning up on the 28th of January, Saturday, 28th of January, 2023 all across the country, 
We're going to, it's going to be a mega one. In Lagos, we're expecting about 5 million people to participate in this cleanup exercise. Where we're going to go to the streets and clean up the mess on the streets. Why clean up the mess on the streets? We're using the opportunity to talk to Nigerians, to look at their current life today and see if they want a continuation of that. If they don't want a continuation of that, then they need to join us in both cleaning the garbage on the streets and cleaning the garbage of what we call today government. I'm yes. getting them out of the way, throwing them into the dustbin, and then bringing in a new set of leadership that will bring the life, the kind of life we want into the country. No so every Nigerian should participate in that. Come out on Saturday. We have four locations where you can come out. Ikeja Underbridge and Srulere Stadium, um, um, Apple, Apple Junction in Amwadofe, and then uh, Jaconde in Victoria, Jaconde in Lekki. Come out there. There are going to be buses all over the place. The same thing is happening in Abuja. Abuja and all the states of the federation. Every state capital. Come out. Be part of the change. The, be part of this transformation. Nigeria, a new Nigeria is coming. Don't wait to hear this talk. You know who captured the problems of Nigeria many, many years ago? It's Mahatma Gandhi in the seven deadly social sins. Yes. Wealth without work. Right. You look at our country, there's many people who want to be rich without working. Or who are rich already. Or who are, rich yeah, who are rich. Yes. If, 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 politics without principles. If you look at what we call politics without principles. Eh? We look at religion without sacrifice. There's some people who just uh, kalu kalu religion. Mm. But religion is about sacrifice. As a pastor here, he will explain to us <laughs> because our freedom came from sacrifice. Um, we look at uh, um, uh, um, science without uh, um, uh, um, conscience. Uh, uh, what's that? Without morality. Uh, um, pleasure without pleasure. conscience. Pleasure without conscience. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm, 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 I'm getting old. All of these are... Uh, <laughs> no more sacrifice. <laughs> no, no more sacrifice, you know. You know, but we cannot continue, continue with those kinds of values. Yes. We need to have a country that is clean. We need to have politicians who are principled. We need to have business that... Run on value. Essentially, does not make profit to come above the humanity okay. of those they sell. Yes. Uh, we need all of those things to define our new moral code and a new country that we build. So, um, any of the Zoom people coming through? Another question. If not, I'm going to begin to wrap up this uh, session. We're moving close to the end of these 12 hours of programming. Uh, we are proud that this is something that has never happened before in Nigeria. Uh, this first time allows a political party to bring its policies before the entire planet, analyze it, and challenge people to ask them questions about it. No political party in the history of this country has ever done what we have done today. And we feel good about it. This is the new Nigeria. A new Nigeria is possible. So, we have a couple of minutes to finish. Hello. Hello, yeah. Hello. Please come. Hello. Quickly, please. Can you hear me? Yes, can I hear you. Okay. This is Dr. Kocha. Ah, from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yes, from Saudi Arabia, bro. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, simply, you know, it's easy to say, okay, let's uh, revamp the educational system. But the major problem is the culture that has been set already, whereby education does not pay anymore. And I say this in a way because I have a nephew who I'm ready to train in the university. And he tells me, uncle, I don't want to go to university. I want to be, just buy me a car. I want to be a driver. And I look at this young man, what is going on here? He said, all his friends that are, have gone to school, what are, they have not gotten anything out of it. You know? So the culture is a problem we may have to deal with rather than just revamping education. How are we going to change this that has come to stay, whereby education does not pay, 
a professor cannot take care of his uh, the the training of his children, you know, because it's not any enough. Whereas ones that don't go to school are making a lot of money. So how do we change this culture whereby education pays when again? You, <laughs> when you begin to put emphasis on competence, yeah. <laughs> on competence, put premium on knowledge, put premium on what people can do, the values they are bringing to earn money, you begin to see a change and transformation. People begin to know that, look, this guy was employed or got this because of this, the solutions he's bringing, because of the knowledge he has and all that. It's systemic. Well, part, yeah. yeah. Well, part it's of it systemic. Is, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, Dr. Kacha, you know uh, basically what's happening here, the culture. That uh, when you, for example, start from the foundation, when the foundation is well built, yes. and that is why that particular issue, you know, if you say, it, oh, buy me a car, because you don't have the foundation. <laughs> you know, one of his seven deadly social sins I was going through is education without character. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's a deadly social sin. Yes. Yeah. And part of what has happened is because character has been lost yes. in providing education. People don't see the value, value of, education. of education quite as they should. And, and so it's also systemic in that sometimes education needs to be skilled and relevant and practicable. Exactly. And yes. the economy is not growing True. because it has been stifled by people who have had the economy by the juggler, such that by the time you've produced somebody of a certain skill, Mm. There's no room for them to express that skill. Yes. Mm. And you keep pushing them down, pushing them down all the time. And then a lot of people have made money without education. Mm. They've made money through psychophancy. Yes. They've made money through corruption. Mm. They've made money through banditry. They've made money through all sorts of kidnapping. things. So people kidnap me. You know, the, yes. a time in my church, some young people came to see me. And I said, what do you want to become in the future? And they told me four things. Number one, they said I wanted to be a soldier. The other one said I want to be an arm robber. Ah, the third yeah. one said I want to be a Yahoo Yahoo expert. <laughs> you know, and so on and so forth. Why? Because we have pushed our trajectory in that very, very unfair way. So we have to change the But the thinking. one thing they don't know is that people who make so-called money that way yeah. very often never oh, yes. end well. Yeah. They don't end and well. it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. No, no. It's not sustainable. So we have to revamp the whole thing. We have to change the thinking. There must be quality education that gives skill and that is relevant. Yeah. We must get the institutions involved in that. Secondly, there must be a growing economy of real production that is receiving the outcomes of our educational system. Yeah, let's try for the Zoom call that is coming through. See if Zoom call will come through. Because the Zoom calls have been managed, most of them. The internet system is down. Is it my turn? Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, okay, I can go ahead? Yes. Yes. Oh, somebody else is asking. No, 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 go yeah, ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, let's see your face if we can. Oh, okay. Uh, we can hear you. Make your comment. Yeah, go ahead. Or oh, ask your question. I'm on, the, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on the telephone. Okay, my question is uh, twofold. The first one is, what is the plan for the Labour Party to ameliorate the PVC collection bottlenecks, especially in Lagos State? That's one. Number two. Do you guys have any plans for a war room so that obedience anywhere can send them contributions in terms of ideas to address real time issues that need to be jumped upon? Thank you. The second question, the answer is yes. The yes. situation is, is in place already. Technology, all set up, people to man, volunteers, all set up. Uh, the first one is we're just going to have to keep putting pressure. We've, we've responded to that question previously. But we need your support in many ways. Contribute to a fund that will enable us to put in place the things that will uh, help all of those things happen. And whatever you can, wherever in the world you are, there are people who are dependent on you or who you know, who trust your judgment. Call them and say, volunteer, first for this kind of cleanup we're doing next Saturday, Second, 
for door-to-door -door oh. canvassing of your neighbors. That day, wake up and knock on their doors and ask them to go and vote. And be a citizen monitor, an ambassador waiting to count the vote. Don't go away and ensure that you police your vote appropriately. Yes, let the Zoom question come. We've had many run-ins with Zoom questions that didn't. Uh, okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Come. Okay, this is Uju Agomo, Dr. Uju Agomo. Okay. Uh, from Sel Tommy. Good evening. Good, good evening. evening and good evening. And thank everyone I've listened. And I just want to just say thank you for what you are doing. Thank you also to our incoming president, by the grace of the Lord, for standing in here. And I just want to say this as a way to encourage him and encourage all of us. And not too long ago, I was at the airport with my husband and well, some people were trying to ask for a bribe. And he goes, we're obedient. We're not a gift shit, shit. Do you know that all of them began to say, we know they collect shit, shit. And it was such a fun, it was such a great thing about that sense of belonging. We are coming there and I believe that all we need is to just have this change. And everyone will begin to move to the right direction. I am persuaded to believe that. So I just want to say this to encourage you, and I will tell you, many people are praying, many people are working hard, many people are doing all that they need to do. I believe we need it all. Uh, Prof, that's just what I want to tell you there. You know, so no too much question, because we've answered yeah, so, much of, so many of them already, and your team. Thank you, everyone. It's coming. <laughs> uh, let's take back our country. A new Nigeria yes. is definitely yes, possible. Yes, it's possible. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, another color. Okay, come on, please do come on. Tell us who you are, where you're calling from. Hello, how are you? We're thankful Good to time. the good Lord. Okay, the program is very interesting. It's very cerebral. You guys have taken pain to analyze a lot of issues and educate Nigerians. I want to raise two critical points. I think early this week, it was on the news that the Labour Party is making effort with INEC to upload all their agents across the country, and the INEC was about to be closed. So I don't know what effort you guys have made to resolve that issue. Then number two, mm. what the senior man already said, sincerity is what we need to drive leadership in this country. But this man on Navy Blue on the other side is just waving the questions, answering the questions. As Nigerians, we are in a very precarious situation. We need to look in between the lines. Leadership is sincerity. What the poor have with this country is leadership system. And this set of politicians that are moving, with respect for our uncle there, who has taken pain to ensure that this country goes good, and has traveled around the world to ensure that things are working. Nigeria has a very fundamental problem. There's monumental poverty. There's hunger. There's educational failure. There's, as I'm talking to a new generation to power my house, there's electricity crisis. All segments of this country is in shambles. So we should be sincere this whole project. People have committed, and that's why you see eight pairs of the colors are calling explorer because they know what their siblings there in Nigeria are facing. They are in an organized clan where things are working, but they are bothered about their relations in Nigeria. Look at the level of killing. Look at where a priest was burnt in his house life. There's no day you listen to news in this country, you will have negative news coming out from the system. It's so sad. If this government is going to form in them, I think we should be very sincere. We should be very realistic. We should come up with the options. I will be able to drive this country. I'm not bothered because I'm about those generations that it's about living. What of the next feeder generation, our children, children? What legacy are we going to put in place for them? These are all the issues that are very important. But when you drive on the streets of Nigeria, you see that the roads are bad, you see the hectic situation, you see poverty on everybody's face. We, Nigerians we are not happy. So the man with navy yeah, blue should be sincere when he's filling out his issues and answering questions. Because this is a very serious issue and we are bothered about it. We have been watching this program since morning. We have, I've not moved out of my house. 
are committed to this project. Yeah. So you guys should be very ready. I trust the prof there. I also trust the pastor. I trust the elder man there. We should be serious. Even Peter being said, be serious. Look at the vice president, Dati Baba Ahmed. That's the best vice president we have ever got in the history of this country. He's not been elected, though, but you see transparency, you see sincerity in his focus, in his face. So these are all the issues. We should try to move this country to the next level. So I, I, the next I, I, generation I, I, yet on board, I, I, and amen, those behind us that are not joining Yahoo Yahoo will be very serious to get out of the situation. By, by the way, you. just an aside thing, if you look, you, you can see God's hand in this whole thing. You know, in the way yeah, man, that yeah, an organic yeah. movement of the people found a P2B, you can see the way a Dati Baba Ahmed was found, the kind of person that he is. What I think God is ready to get Nigeria going in the right direction. I think we must be thankful. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been praying, yes. you know, and uh, when people pray, God seems to respond and he responds into their hearts. You know, somebody was calling me from some part of Nigeria today. He said, we need this, we need that. He said, we don't need money. Mm -hmm. We don't need, nobody's asking for money. He says, I've never seen something like this before. Mm -hmm. Just send us materials. Material. The people are ready to work. You see, this is time. It's time for sincerity. It's time for truth. It's time for honesty. It's time for us to tell ourselves the truth in Nigeria. One of the problems in Nigeria is that we don't tell ourselves the truth. We know good from bad. We know bad from good. But because of our own personal interests, because of our self-centeredness, because of our selfishness, we keep deceiving one another. And then we keep complaining that the country is going down. If you don't want the country to go down, rise up and you speak the truth. Yeah. And one truth we have to tell ourselves now is that it's time for a break. <laughs> <laughs>